What's up guys, my name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and today I've got a video to fix a rather annoying issue. So I updated Windows to Windows 2004, and over here by my little internet icon, I can click it, and as you can see, it says I have no internet access. However, if I bring across, say, a Google page and search for something, you can see that the internet works basically as normal with full internet speed, I can go ahead and do a speed test and you can see that things are working very much as expected. So why exactly am I left with this annoying little thing? Well, if I go ahead and open up network and internet settings over here, you can see it just says no internet access and it gives me the option to troubleshoot it. Why exactly it's named V Ethernet EXT switch? Well, that's simply because I used Hyper-V and it's been renamed. But I can assure you this is a pure Ethernet connection from my PC straight to the router connected to the internet. And this usually wouldn't be annoying, this would be something I can simply look past, except for the fact that Creative Cloud over here, when I go to try and update Premiere or anything like that, it simply just says the internet is unavailable and it's stuck in offline mode because it's using this to check if I'm actually online instead of trying itself, which is rather annoying. So how exactly do we go ahead and fix this issue? Well, there's a couple of different fixes that we can try. First of all, we're gonna try and reset our connection to the internet. No, this shouldn't change anything, but it should just disable and re-enable our internet connection on our PC. So first of all, hit start and type in CMD. Then find command prompt and click run as admin. Hit yes when prompted for admin. And then in here, we'll type in net sh space int space ip space reset. Upon hitting enter, it'll go ahead and reset a bunch of settings. Make sure that things are working. The last one said access denied, though I'm pretty sure things should still be fine as we've done quite a bit. So then I'll go ahead and type in IP config space forward slash flush DNS as such. Then we'll do IP config space forward slash release as such, and then IP config space forward slash renew. Then after doing all of that, we can simply close that black window. Then we'll go ahead and restart and things should be working as expected. Well, unfortunately, no luck with that attempt. So I'll click this little no internet icon, network and internet settings, and I'll go ahead and click troubleshoot. Then we'll get a list of adapters over here. Simply pick how you connect to the internet. If you have no idea how you're connected to the internet, press start, type in control panel, and open up this window over here. Then we'll head into network and internet, network and sharing center, and I'll get to the screen over here. So if you know what your device is called, simply look for it on the right hand side. This top one over here, the private network, is how I'm connected to the internet, and this one over here directly affects my connection. If I were to disable this one, I'd no longer be able to access the internet. So with that in mind, we'll find it on the list over here, we'll click on it, and we'll click next. All right, so that unfortunately didn't help us get anywhere. The next thing we can do is try and reinstall our drivers. So of course, if you have a built-in wireless card or ethernet adapter, simply Google for your motherboard or laptop's model number. I of course have absolutely no idea what's in my PC, so I'll open up the command prompt with start R and typing in CMD. Then I'll type in WMIC space baseboard get, hit enter and we'll get a bunch of information back. Now of course it isn't exactly formatted the best, it's meant to be in a table, but we can see the brand of the motherboard here. Mine is an ASUS ROG Strix X570 F Gaming. So I'll simply select it and right click to copy it. Then I'll head across to Google, I'll paste it in, space drivers. After giving it a search, I'll click on the first link from asus.com. Though of course, yours will depend on whatever brand yours is. Then we'll head across to the driver tab, drivers and tools, we'll select our OS, and we'll simply scroll down until we find LAN or wireless, network, etc. This is exactly what I have in my PC, and this is what I'll be downloading the drivers for. So I'll click download and wait for it to finish. Then I'll click on it to open it up, and we'll have this folder over here. I'll simply extract this onto a place like my desktop, making a new folder, opening it up, I'll select everything, drag and drop it out into this folder, and I can close the zip. Now we won't be using this right now, but we're downloading it just in case something goes wrong. The next couple of steps involve uninstalling the networking driver and restarting our PC, hoping that Windows can fix itself. Assuming that we have issues connecting to the internet, that's exactly what this driver over here is for. Of course, I'd highly recommend that you have a second computer or a laptop handy, just in case this is the incorrect driver or something goes wrong, you still have a way that you can get the networking driver onto your computer using something like a USB. So I'm recording this next part of the video way later after I've actually fixed the issue, mainly because I tried a bunch of different things and nothing really worked. From here, 
What I did ultimately that worked was press start and type in device. Then I opened up device manager and with this on the screen in front of me, simply expand the network adapters section. Then we'll see a bunch of network adapters here. You can mainly ignore these WAN mini ports. What we're looking for is the way you're connected to the internet. This one over here is how I'm connected. Intel 1211 gigabit network connection. This is my ethernet adapter. Simply right click on yours and click uninstall. Then you'll get this pop up over here. Simply click uninstall unless you have a checkbox saying delete the driver as well. If you have that option, check that and then click uninstall. Now, of course, because I finally got mine working, I'm not going to do that again. But after you've uninstalled that, you can simply go ahead and restart your PC. Quick side note, this may or may not work for you. When I did this, I also uninstalled the NordVPN tap driver and the Nord Lynx driver. Of course, if you're using a VPN like I am, you can easily go ahead and re-download that once you're done. So if this didn't work for you and you'd like to try it again, you can simply uninstall your main network driver and uninstall all of your VPN drivers as well. While uninstalling the WAN mini port probably wouldn't make too much of a difference, I just ignored it and things worked well. Then when you restart your PC, you shouldn't be connected to the internet for a few seconds to about a minute while Windows looks for the driver. Of course, if you don't manage to reconnect to the internet, simply open up the folder on your desktop. This is where we extracted the driver that we downloaded. When you see this, simply open up something that says setup, install or something similar. Now for me, opening up this install.bat work, simply right click and click run as admin. Though of course, depending on your board manufacturer or how you're connected to the internet, the driver installation may be slightly different. Upon finishing, you will probably need to restart your PC, though you might not. After restarting that time, things should be fixed for you as they were for me. Though of course, if they're still not and you're using a wireless to connect to the internet, there is another fix that we can try. So next up, let's check the power plan. I'll hit start and type in power. Then we'll head across to edit power plan and we'll get this page over here. If I go back a page, you can see I have AMD Ryzen balance selected. I'll click on high performance and click change plan settings. Heading into the advanced power options, we get to this over here. Let's head into wireless adapter settings, power saving mode, and make sure it's on maximum performance. Hitting OK, hopefully that's fixed your issue if it wasn't set to maximum performance. So next up, we'll try and use the network location awareness setting in Windows. What exactly is this? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Press start and type in services. Then we'll open up services and we'll see this over here. Then we'll type in NET and we'll get to N. Then we'll look for network location awareness. We'll right click and go to properties. Then we'll go to the dependencies tab. So then we have these over here. We'll simply follow it from the top to the bottom and make sure they're all running. So number one, DHCP client, you can see is running. If it's not running, simply right click and click start. Then we'll look for network store interface. We'll right click and click start if not already running. Then we'll look for remote procedure call. Make sure it's running. Then the last one is Windows event log, which is also running. So of course, if that didn't help, then unfortunately that isn't the answer. And there we go, upon rebooting one last time, we finally have the connected status and we're connected to the internet as we expect. So I feel that it might have been something to do with NordVPN's driver and because I uninstalled that, I'll simply need to go ahead and uninstall NordVPN and reinstall it to get access back to my VPN. Other than that, we're now connected to the internet and that is basically that. It's been really long and annoying, but anyways, my name has been Technobi here for Troubleshoot. Hopefully this video helped you and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.